Hey everybody, John here. Today we are going to be making a clean bass sound in citrus. And as you can see in the back, I have eight bars of kind of just a couple notes put together. I have a few sustained and a few short ones here, as you can see. And then in the background, I have a just some random FPC drums with some of their uh, with some of their MIDI packs, just to kind of put in context so we can hear what it sounds like. So this is what this patch sounds like. So as you could probably tell, the sustain is generally pretty good for this uh, for this patch, as well as faster notes if you want to be a little bit more rhythmic with it too. So it kind of works both ways. So before we start diving into this patch and getting uh, accustomed with what we're making, when I try to synthesize or make something that's out of the real world, I try to ask myself, what exactly are the main characteristics of that sound? So with a bass, we know one, it's gonna be generally low end, and two, it's gonna be a string that oscillates. So with those two things, we can kind of dive a little bit deeper in understanding it. So when there's a bass player and he's playing a note on the bass, he's either gonna be using a pick or he's gonna be using his finger. Both of those sounds are drastically different. With a pick, you're gonna have much more higher end uh, harmonic content. And with a finger, it's gonna be a little bit more thuddy sounding maybe, or a little bit rounder, I guess, if that's the kind of way you wanna put it. Basically, less harmonic content content on the uh, on the top end so that's kind of what I try to think about so for this patch I went with more of like a finger plucking sound so just by itself if we select this patch and play a few notes it almost kind of sounds like there's someone hitting it with their finger and I did keep the stain up a little bit longer or a little higher volume just so I can hold out notes a little bit longer and let it uh fill up the uh, the bottom end of the song a little bit more. So that's kind of the core principles of that song. Let's uh, walk through this patch a little bit and then we're gonna go and recreate it and, uh, and see why we did that. So first of all, on the main tab here, I do generally like to have high, oh my God, HQ envelopes on. And then on the pitch, I drag this all the way down 24 semitones, as we can see up at the top there in a little tool tip. And then I jump into operator one and this is the harmonic content that I created here with alternate difference of phase and all that. And then operator two, it looks like this and it's getting FM'd a little bit. Uh, so, so operator two is FM operator one, just a little bit. And then I'm sending operator one out to the filter and then out to the output, which looks like this. So in the filter, there's a couple things that we need to talk about. So I have this cut here on the envelope to kind of close the filter a little bit to kind of remove the harmonic content because once a string gets plucked there's going to be higher higher end harmonics and those are going to not really slowly but kind of fastly decay once the note starts to oscillate so at the beginning there's kind of an attack of more harmonics and then it kind of goes away so that's something that we recreated here as well as on the first operator we go under the pitch tab and we hit this pitch. It gets a little higher pitch and then it rests into our fundamental frequency. Because anytime you hit a string, it's first gonna be a little bit sharp and then it's gonna kind of settle in and oscillate at the, uh, at the tuning that it's supposed to be at. So that's how we recreate this here. So, it kind of sounds a little like that. So let's get a brand new version of Citrus here and let's drag it here to track four. And let's close this. Let's open this up, go to presets and go to default and let's start completely fresh. And I'd like to maximize it just a little bit to kind of see it a little bit better. So first things first, as I said, we, why are we not hearing this? Let's look over here because it's muted. So unmuted if yours is muted. So first of all, I'll drag the pitch all the way down to 24. So now we're kind of in the low end spectrum. That box is checked. Next, I went into the operator one and just a sine wave itself is not really enough characteristics of the waveform. So let's go right click this and convert sh to sine shape harmonics. So as we see here, there's just one fun fundamental frequency. And what I've kind of like to do is kind of maybe get a few of these in there. And then now we'll listen to it. It almost has that base characteristics. And there's something also important to notice on the second harmonic here. Try to look around the face because you'll notice there's a certain spot where you're going to get a little bit more low end. So let's kind of look for that. So maybe 
maybe around there. So you notice here, whoops. You can almost he see here is this kind of not as much low end, but if we kind of look for it, probably around there. And then also I would suggest to kind of mess around with the phases of these other harmonics up here and kind of maybe hone in your, what type of bass sound you kind of want to go for. So that's generally okay for now. And now let's hop into the volume envelope and let's turn this on and turn this. I mean, you can turn it on tempo. I really kind of don't want to because it's more of an organic sound. Like every bass attack isn't necessarily tuned to it, but that's kind of a choice you can make yourself. So let's drag this point here all the way to the left and let's drag the uh, sustain all the way to the left as well. Not all the way, but probably around here and or bring our release here. So this is kind of what the shape of a base envelope is going to look like. It's going to have a pretty quick attack, and then it's going to kind of decay in volume kind of substantially, and then it'll rest here. If it's up here, it almost sounds too digital or too created. So bringing it down a little bit here sounds almost a little bit more like a string would sound. And you can see the meters, how they drop down here. And then also pay attention to the release because you don't want it too long because then once you're playing a lot of different notes, it can get muddy and not sound as good, for example. Like it just starts to sound a little bit ugly at that point. So definitely hone in your, your, uh, your release to your taste. So we're pretty close, but there's a couple other things that we need to take care of, like the pitch, for example. So let's go to our pitch envelope and let's turn this on. And let's delete all of this, turn this back off, and then grab this dot here and maybe put it up like four or five or six, something like that to start with. And then let's make a right click here and then kind of play around with this parameter here. So we can see that pitch getting affected, but maybe it's a little bit much. Maybe it's a little much to tighten the curve a little bit. Maybe bring this over a little bit. Let's take our snapping off just a tad here. So that's probably enough. It's a very subtle thing, but it definitely makes a difference once everything's kind of working together. So generally we're gonna be okay now with our first operator. Now with our second one, we have a sine wave and let's also convert this to harmonics. And for this, you probably only need maybe three or actually a fundamental and two harmonics at the top. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna slightly FM two to one. And then drop this down one octave. So now we have that type of frequency modulation that's affecting the first operator to, to kind of make it sound more of like a bass. So the difference would be, really only need a little bit of this here. And if you really want to, you can kind of go a little crazy and have a completely different sound. So something kind of like that, but that's de definitely up to you for, as a taste thing. All right, so next off, let's take this out of the output and let's send this through a filter. So filter one, operator one is going to filter one and this filter one is going to the output. So now let's look at filter number one. I generally like to go number one here. Let's go with a, let's go with a lime low pass for this and HQ. And then something to think about too is when the string, like I mentioned before, gets hit, the higher high, the high content, oh my goodness, the high frequency content is gonna start and then it's gonna decay generally pretty quickly. So let's recreate that here. So with our cut, let's go over here to cut and let's make an envelope, turn this on, and let's turn our pencil and let's delete all this here. So kind of the same shape is gonna be for our uh, 
like our pitch, what we did before. Let's turn our magnet on real quick. Make sure it snaps here in the center. So, and at first this is probably, you're probably not gonna notice too much of it. And that's why we wanna jump into operator one. And then at this point, we can choose how much high, uh, some harmonics that we wanna to add to it so that that filter can cut it off pretty quickly. So let's do it kind of drastically here. Let's go to our cut here. And we can see on the uh, frequency analyzer, how, or the spectrum analyzer, how there's the higher content here and then it kind of fades off into this blue. A little drastic here. So maybe we can do it a little exaggerated to find the spot that we like. Let's bring this down. And then now we can go back to our bass and let's remove some of these harmonics here by holding Alt and then kind of just scrolling through these here. It's a little too much. It's too much. And you can see how much of this uh, this uh, phase knob can really affect the low end of that. See from here to so definitely pay attention to the phase down here as well because that's another very specific spot you can really dial in that low end And that's generally the main concept of making this type of bass. There's other interesting things that you can do to add on to this. This is kind of just like a good starting point. But if you go to main, you can maybe go up to two voices here, bring the panning kind of down a little bit so it's not so spread out, and then the uh, the pitch, bring this down as well so it's not too too detuned. And now it kind of fills up this the uh, the stereo field. And if you notice, you can kind of hear it oscillating, moving back and forth, which is what produces this weird pattern here. And now if we, we want to make something a little bit more, um, maybe growly or weird sounding, we would generally want to add a little bit more of these harmonics here. So if we kind of drag something maybe like this, Then we go back to our filter and increase some resonance. Something kind of like that. And it's really all depending on your, your harmonics here. We can maybe even go a little bit more. This is a little different type of resonance as well. And also mess around with different filters. But I'll leave that to you to experiment once you get to that base point. <laughs> a little pun there. So yeah, hopefully you learned something uh, in this video. Uh, so it's ba basically a concept of additive synthesis with FM synthesis as well. And really it's not that much here. And last little demonstration, if you want to make this sound even crazier, You can automate this as well and something that you might like to do so if this is oscillator or operator 2 you can go to operator 2 go to the mod tab here and maybe choose x or y and if you went to the volume for example and kind of turn this all the way down then we're going to head over to the uh the main tab and make sure this is all the way to the left
you can make some interesting sound design with that as well. So hopefully you learned something from this video and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.